Hi, and welcome back. So a study out of America has looked into a novel way of addressing a crippling age-related condition that affects 28% of the over 60s worldwide. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new intervention has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by the University of Michigan, which looked into the debilitating condition of osteoarthritis and a possible intervention that does not include medication. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. It may shoot through your hands while you're typing or flare up in your knees when you're getting out of the car or even out of the bath. But wherever the pain is, over 32 million Americans and an estimated 10% of all men and 18% of all women over the age of 60 worldwide are living with osteoarthritis and the pain and physical limitations that it brings with it. To reduce the constant pain, patients living with this crippling condition are often told by their doctors to simply exercise. It does sound simple, but people with osteoarthritis may experience pain when they start to move more, which can be a deterrent to taking up or sticking with any exercise program. Daniel Wibley, PhD, an assistant professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation at the University of Michigan said, pain during movement is an important reason why this population isn't more active and we need to identify ways we can help to change this. Otherwise, they may end up in a loop of pain and inactivity that we know can lead to disability later down the line. A growing body of evidence shows that maintaining good sleep health, more specifically high quality sleep for an appropriate duration in patients with osteoarthritis may reduce their pain and also their discomfort. There is also strong evidence supporting the links between sleep and being physically active. Professor Wibley stated that if you're sleeping well, you're more likely to be able to move more the next day or stick with a planned exercise program. And those who are physically active during the day are more likely to get a good night's sleep. Professor Wibley's team looked to develop a new intervention that brought together insights from previous research that support these two relationships. Professor Wibley explained that there are many different physical activity or exercise programs for people with osteoarthritis, but they spend relatively little time on sleep. Conversely, some researchers have started to investigate the effectiveness of cognitive behavioral therapy, the process of rooting out problematic thoughts and changing cognitive patterns for insomnia as a way of reducing osteoarthritis related pain. What hasn't been investigated yet is whether simultaneously targeting both sleep and physical activity and the optimal balance between them will result in better pain outcomes for osteoarthritis, also called OA. With his team of researchers, Professor Wibley introduced the concept of a hybrid sleep exercise program that observed focus group composed of people living with both OA and sleep disturbances. The sleep component of this intervention is an automated program called Sleepio. Sleepio delivers cognitive behavior therapy for insomnia over the internet, as well as components focused on sleep education and behavior modifications to certain sleep routines. In tandem with the six week Sleepio course, users complete an exercise program with remote weekly support from an exercise program coach. During the focus groups, the researchers explained the outline plan for the hybrid program. They encouraged discussion between the participants about how best to adapt the design and delivery plans. These discussions informed the development of prototype materials, which were then shared and refined with the same study participants at a second round of focus groups that were held 
one month later. So what were the findings? The findings that were published in the British Journal of Pain and supported through versus arthritis and the Dan Barry Research Programme revealed that motivational language, personal accountability and access to educational materials were the most important features to include in a successful programme for sleep and exercise for OA related pain. When talking about the findings, Professor Wibley highlighted that the participants wanted to be encouraged to stick to the sleep and exercise components of the programme using terms void of negative associations that made it seem like punishment. They also wanted to share records of activity with healthcare professionals without feeling like they have no power in the dynamic. However, these features also present some challenges. Anna Kratz, PhD, a co-investigator on the study and an associate professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation at Michigan Medicine said, previous negative interactions with healthcare providers, such as feeling patronized or underestimated and being asked to excessively record sleep and daily physical activity may cause people to feel disinterested or discouraged. Professor Kratz went on to say, developing an understanding of what factors may present barriers to engaging with the program was a primary reason to conduct the focus groups. In response to our findings, we were then able to create intervention materials that would be more attractive to potential users, including a workbook that supports adaptation of intervention content for the individual using it, allowing them to set their own activity or sleep goals and keep track of their progress. A test of the program's feasibility is underway with a small group of people living with OA and once complete, the team will conduct a full trial. Professor Wibley hopes that the results will provide more insight into the relationship between sleep, physical activity and exercise and how their balance can impact OA pain. Professor Wibley closed by saying, people living with OA want to improve their sleep, physical activity and exercise behavior and reduce their pain. All of these are valid outcomes. I'm not saying this new program will be the magic bullet for everyone, but I think the hybrid approach holds great potential for the future of OA related pain management. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, in my humble opinion, this is a very interesting theory. I do know that if I've had a bad night's sleep for some reason, I'm less inclined to exercise or exercise as hard the next day, which then at the end of the day leaves me with some extra energy, which means I find it difficult to sleep. And then I don't, I don't want to exercise the next day. This could quickly turn into a very negative downward spiral. Um, I think the link between good sleep and the ability to want to exercise is fairly understandable. Um, I do also know that quite a few people who suffer with osteoarthritis or some form of arthritis and even getting up from a low chair and walking is extremely painful for them. So I understand or I can I can see the problems that they that they face. Um, maybe it's an idea to focus on getting better sleep. And once you've got better sleep, you may then want to exercise more, which is supposed to be beneficial for people that suffer with OA. Let me know in the comments of the YouTube video what you think. I'd be interested to see if you believe that there is a link between good sleep and the ability to want to exercise and then obviously um, address the pain and the symptoms of osteoarthritis.